Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm studying the unseen body and creative spaces of erasure and exposure of the queer. Yeah! Welcome back or welcome to Uncle ABL. And in today's video, we're talking about useless college majors that for some reason people are celebrating on these interwebs. Now, we got a couple of videos, both from NYU. Then we're going to hear from Patrick Bet David about what you should be doing. And also, we're going to list some of the majors that you should have rather than what these individuals are celebrating. A bunch of made up, ridiculous, woke nonsense. Now, before I go any further, let's get straight into it. Uh, I may pause it at certain points to give my two cents. But what you're going to hear again, these videos are both going to be from NYU. Let's take a look at what they are celebrating as far as their major and what you should do rather than this. Let's go ahead and check it out. My name is Jacob and my concentration is environmental science and sustainable business. Hi, my name is Lex and my concentration is the performance of self. Hi, I'm Gabrielle. My concentration is creative direction, production and narrative through the arts. Um, performance and written work. Hi, my name is Karina Gummis, and my concentration is in journalism and Latin American studies. Can we just pause for a minute? Let's just pause just for a little bit of context. Again, this is New York University that they're talking about. All right. To attend this school, I looked it up. You're talking about $53,000 a year. So if you go for four years, you're looking at bare minimum 200000 and then that's not, that's not even including room, board, everything else. If you are out of state and you're living on campus, man, you're talking about north of 300 grand. A mortgage on your back of student loan debt that you can't even discharge in bankruptcy. So maybe a concentration in journalism and Latin American studies might not be the best thing, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so I digress. With an emphasis in human rights, collective memory, and political violence. Hi, my name is Stephanie Lee, and I study the sociology of environmental communication. Hi, my name is Reed, and I study music business and gender studies. Hi, my name is Dominique, and I studied care politics with a minor in disability studies. And you know what? Some may be asking, hey, ABO, what are they going to do with these degrees after they graduate? What's going to be their job? I think I know what they are going to want to do and what they may end up doing. And that is part of a problem that we got right now in this country. We'll talk about that in a moment. My name is Elliot Wright, and my concentration is art as a social mechanism. Hi, I'm Georgia, and my concentration is dramatic writing and theatrical adaptation. My name is Noah Loyacano, and my concentration is equilibrium or negotiated paradox. Now, I don't even know what that is. Maybe that's too big brain for me. Maybe that's some super high tech stuff right there. If any of you guys know what that is, his concentration is equilibrium or negotiated paradox. If you know what that is, please let me know in the comments. I love to, I would love to learn that right now from myself. Hi, my name is Sophie Lopez and uh, my concentration is titled Queering and Decolonizing Theater Practice. Hi, my name is Maya and my concentration is Journalism, Postcolonial Studies and Psychoanalysis. Hi, I'm Eloise. I'm graduating with a concentration in Philosophy of Science and Theater. My name is Amina and my concentration is titled The Criminal Mind, which is surrounded on criminology and applied psychology. Hi, my name is Juliana. My concentration is International Business and Fashion through sustainable development yeah my name is okay so that's one we got one more from nyu we have one more and you know what before we begin um i think a lot of these individuals are going to wind up being if not just starbucks baristas talking about you want sugar or stevia milk or cream etc if not just that they may wind up being teachers these would be the ones that will have your kids brainwashed from a very young age and some of them are already brainwashed by their parents. The one girl's name was Reed, a uh, gender neutral. See, it's their parents that started and then they go K through 12 and then they go to college and they experience some of the same thing. Now, I don't want to get too political, but that's kind of what's going on. All right. And a lot of you guys who are in college or you're about to go to, you might be in high school or if you have kids that are going to college, you have to understand that this kind of thing is going on. You got to understand what's going on and be able to counteract it if you want to be able to be successful in this world because a lot of these majors are not going to get you prepared for success. But let's keep on going with the next one. Then we're going to get into what you really should do. 
representing Latin American women in visual culture. Yeah! Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm studying the unseen body and creative spaces, the erasure and exposure of the queer. Yeah! Now, are these things that just make up? Look at this. Uh, her major is her, her, she's studying the unseen body and creative spaces of erasure and exposure of the queer. What is that? Like, what are you going to do with that aside from Starbucks barista or middle school teacher? Nothing wrong with being a teacher, but if that is what you got going on in college and then you become a teacher, that's when it become a, that's when it becomes an issue for the kids that are in your class. Hey, I'm Nina and I studied the arts, education, and social justice. Yeah! I'm Joyce, I studied decolonial intimacies, indigenous politics, and resistance. Yeah! I'm Victoria and I studied remembering or forgetting, uh, navigating international conflict through collective memory. Yeah! Hi, I'm Yvonne and I studied monstrosity, the subaltern praxis. Or should I say I created it? So she did make this up. Her, her, her study is a theory of monstrosity, the subaltern praxis. <laughs> what is that? Again, maybe that's just too big brain for me. Maybe I'm just not smart enough. Maybe my IQ is not all the way to the top. Okay, maybe they're dealing with a full deck and I'm sure a few cards. Okay, a few tens and nines and jokers and whatnot is just out of my deck and on the ground. I don't know what's going on, but there's more to that, but I'll leave it right there. You get the general gist of what's happening. We got these ridiculous woke majors now. Apparently Let's look at what Patrick Bet David said about this whole kerfuffle that's going on with these ridiculous college majors. Then we're going to get to what kids should be taking for a major if they want to have success in the future. Check it out. Friends, if your kids are not yet going to college, pay attention to this. Kids, if you're watching this, maybe you're 16, 17 years old, pay very close attention. Watch what it says here when it comes down to major choice. Many 18 to 22 year olds base their major choices on personal interest rather on labor market demand and supply gaps. Now let's pause. It's it's good to it's it's a dream to have a job that you're really, really interested in, that you love. Like let's say for example, you like counting frog hairs for a hobby. Okay. Now you might want to go out and get a job in that. You might want to go to college and major in that, but at a certain point you gotta be realistic. What's the job market for frog hair counters? It's probably not one. So why would you spend a mortgage of debt on something like that? You're going to be a Starbucks barista talking about, can I please get some student loan debt forgiveness because you can't afford to make your bare minimum payments, which ain't going to be no minimum. It's going to be the full amount every month and you can't afford to pay it. So maybe rather than that, you could keep your front hair counting hobby as a hobby and then do a thing that you can actually make money in and build a future with so you won't be on the street talking about can i get some debt forgiveness but let's keep on going what does that mean pursue your passion and everything's gonna be perfect oh my god i love art i'm gonna go work at a museum and i'm gonna work as art person at this museum making thirty two thousand dollars a year but i'm gonna love it but i live in new york and oh my god my rent is forty two hundred dollars mom how am I supposed to pay this rent? You chose fine arts as a major. Nobody told you to do so. And by the way, since we're talking about fine arts, let's go to the community of fine arts, the wonderful human beings in America that go and spend $200,000 getting a <laughs> fine arts degree. I have a couple friends in this industry. I'm sure I'm going to get some uh, nasty DMs and texts, but let's get into it. Now, you know what? I'm going to just a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, you know, just transparency. I have a fine arts degree, actually, at only in associates. But I knew going into it what I was getting into, you understand? So I went to a community college and paid for it out of pocket from working the Old Country Buffet back in like 02, 03. And I had some Pell Grants, basically no debt from that. Zero debt from my degree. And then I went to a four-year college for one year after that. And my total debt from that was seven grand. And I paid that off many, many years ago. My student loan debt payments were only about... $65 a month from that one year of college. That's the only kind of student loan I've ever had. And that's been done for many, many years. I paid it off probably about 10 years ago. I know people that are paying eight to nine to $1,000 a month in student loan debt with the same kind of degree that I have and make a lot less money than I do. Here we go. Unemployment rate of recent college graduates in the U.S. as of February 2023 by major. What do you think's all the way at the top? Fine arts got a big lead with 12.1% unemployment. Then it's philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So my man, he's he's right on point. Now, I don't want to play the rest of this. I want to get straight into some of the majors you can take right now that are going to give you the best chance of success. You see, I just Googled it, highest paying college majors. So you're going to see a common theme that is present throughout all of this. Okay, so we got computer science, uh, chemical engineering, aerospace engineering, electrical engineering, petroleum engineering, industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering. You see something that's pretty consistent. Try being an engineer. Try doing that. Try dealing with numbers. Try being good at math. Okay, economics, aerospace engineering, finance. There's these the top careers all do with numbers, all do with math, all do with the world around you and the way that things operate. So if, you, if you're good at math and good at numbers, you're, you're good. But maybe you're not good at math and you're not good at numbers, okay? Nursing, nursing is a big one, okay? This is really big. You can make a lot of money. You know, maybe you start kind of small. It might be a CNA or something like that, especially for the young ladies. This, this is a career that's 90% women. And a lot, of, a lot of ladies out there are crushing it with the nursing industry. A lot of you guys are out there really doing your thing. You might start as a CNA, not making a lot of money. I'm working at a nursing home or a rehab facility, but then you might be able to upgrade to an RN, a travel nurse, making well above six figures a year, okay? So that's definitely a good major to get into. And you see more engineering, physics, not psychology, but physics, nuclear engineering, business, but business is kind of a vague one. You want to be actually, you, you want to be able to um, do something with that specifically. Statistics, operations, research, construction management, pharmacology, actuaries. You want to get into things that actually have an impact on society, not just things that you are interested in because maybe you saw it somewhere and it looked cool to you. Get into things that actually make money. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to everybody that went to college and has a degree and underwater basket weaving, I mean, that might not be the best thing for you when you're talking to be about being able to make money. And again, I don't want to hear from those people who come out five years later with a crazy, ridiculous mortgage-like student loan payment on their back talking about, can I get some forgiveness? Nah, listen, you have to understand what you're doing before you get into it. Don't go to college to take out so much debt or have your parents take out debt, refinancing the house and whatnot, so you can go be a far care counter for a living. That doesn't make any sense. If you're going to spend that much money on a thing that is intended to get you a good return on your investment research and make sure that you're going to be able to get that good ROI. Do the thing that has the best chance of you being able to go out there, get gainful employment and succeed rather than just doing whatever you want to do. It does not make sense to spend all that money just to be kind of playing around and goofing off. And that's pretty much all I got. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.